Hello and welcome again to another episode of Sacktown Talks. Your host here, Jarrett Blanion, joined by Melissa Hurtado from the 14th Senate District. Melissa, how's it going? Thanks for joining us. It's going well. Thank you uh, for having me for the invitation. And it's it's such a pleasure to be here with you today. Oh, thank you. Where, where are you uh, recording from today? I'm recording out of uh, Sanger, California, my hometown. It's, I'm inside my bedroom. Nice. <laughs> my bedroom slash office. <laughs> <laughs> and where'd you grow up? I, I grew up here. I grew up in Sanger. I was born in Fresno and uh, raised here uh, my entire life. What is there a popular eatery in Sanger? Yes, there is. Chuck Wagon. The Chuck Wagon. Okay. You always hear, you know, these towns down in the valley, and they always have that Sanger is one of those you always hear about, but you don't necessarily know. So, so what what brought you from Sanger all the way up to Sacramento? What made you want to join uh, the Senate and, and being elected? Yes, and th- thank you for the question. Before I you know begin to answer that, I really want to take a moment to um, to really honor the the. The memory of the founder of uh, Sacktown Talks, um, Scott Lay. He is someone that, as a college student at Cal State Sacramento, that a lot of us looked up to and kind of always wanted to, uh, you know, hear from more. And and being a college Democrat there, uh, we he was an inspiration to all of us, and particularly his interest in on community colleges. Uh, and that's something that I also have a big interest in. So he was a visionary and, um, you know, my condolences uh, to you all at Sacktown Talks, but also to his family and friends. Yes, thank you. Well, well put. Yeah. And, um, you yeah, know, to, to touch on the reason why I decided to uh, come to Sacramento really stems from my upbringing, um, poverty in the Central Valley. Uh, it really, after the recession, the, the Central Valley never really fully recovered. And not only did was I hearing it from from loved ones, from uh, from friends? I was also experiencing it, and uh, you know, as as a daughter of immigrant parents, you're told go to you know go to college, and you'll do better than we did. And so I did that, and and your know, life hasn't been uh, better than my parents. My pa- my parents were able to accomplish more with no college education, with no high school diploma. Um, with only a third grade uh, education coming here to America, coming here to the Central Valley. Uh, and, and things have completely changed from uh, the time that, they're a- that they were able to, to accomplish their American dream, their California dream. It, it's no longer the same. And, and it, it gets to a point where you just get angry. You're angry enough right. um, where you want to do something about it. And that's where I was. I, that's where I was back in 2018. Uh, you know, people usually say that it takes two years to run for uh, the state Senate seat. I was jumping in January, uh, you know, a couple months before the primary with, you know, a full uh, list of candidates already running uh, for that seat, both on the Democratic side and then, of course, the incumbent. So what were you doing just prior to, I guess, running for election in 2018? I was you know, doing organizing with uh, on you know, health health access and also uh, for for the teachers union here locally, and uh, it, that's my background. I, I know how to organize, union organizer, and uh, it, it took a big interest as well in in healthcare and and organizing around that. And it's something that I still continue to champion now in the state senate. Yeah, I think I remember your election was one of those first elections where election night, the results looked one way, and then we woke up the next day and it, w- it was totally different. Um, can you kind of bring us back to that point in 2018 in that race and I guess how you felt election night uh, and kind of kind of waking up the next day to you know seeing that you'd won soundly against a, a, an incumbent? Yeah, I look, I when I got into this race, I knew that the <laughs> that I had a long shot. I didn't have any money. I, I wasn't like, I wasn't the incumbent. I wasn't all connected uh, to, to the point where, uh, you know, I was going to be able to have all these funding, your funding available to be, you know, to run a, an effective uh, and successful campaign for Senate. But I had the drive, I had the motivation 
And, and I worked hard. I worked and knocked on doors in every community of this, of the Senate district. I didn't knock on every door. Uh, I, there's, there's way too many, but I did knock on a lot of doors in each community, um, both in the primary, in the primary, in the general election. And, uh, and the one thing that my consultant keep, kept on telling me was just, just look, uh, just, it's all about turnout. If you uh, are able to, if we have high turnout, you're going to win and uh, don't worry about it. And so the other thing that I, I also heard from, uh, was it uh, Amanda Renteria at that time? She gave me a call like a few days, probably before the election. And she said, Melissa, whatever you do, just don't give up. Don't say, okay, I, I know that I lost because, you know, Kings County is probably going to come in and they're probably, Kings County is probably not going to be overwhelmingly in support of you, but just, you know, hold on and just see what the results are. And so the night of the election, I was walking and knocking on doors up until the last minute uh, doing, a, you know, get out the vote efforts. And what I saw is just, I saw a lot of people turning out and I knew then at 8 p.m., I knew at 8 p.m. that that I was gonna win this, um, this, this race. Uh, and, you know, also just, it was interesting because then, you know, once the results started kind of uh, coming in, it didn't look so good. I was behind, but that's because of what, you know, Amanda, Rhea, Amanda Renteria had said at that time. She said, right. Kings County will come in first. It's not going to look good. And that's exactly what happened. But I knew in my heart uh, that th- this was a, a winning situation, whether I actually lost or if I won, I, I knew that I wanted to um, move a message forward about the community that I live in. And, and, and I felt that I was doing that. So uh, I know I had individuals coming up to me at, you know, 10 30 PM saying, Oh, I'm sorry. You know, you ran a good race and people will uh, remember you from, uh, from this campaign and, and you can run in four years. And I was at peace um, regardless of whatever the actual outcome was. And, and, and sure enough, by like midnight, I was ahead. So it, I started receiving calls about one in the morning and people were like, Oh my God, Melissa, you won. <laughs> and they were in shock. And I said, well, you know, let's, there's still, we still have to make sure that the, the, the results fully come in. And we waited a couple of days before we actually uh, declared victory. Yeah. So I guess you've been up here now three, three years, you're going into, I guess your first reelection, I guess, how are you, are you approaching this reelection campaign any differently? Or are you going to kind of go in with the same mentality you did in 2018? Same mentality. I mean, it, it just, focused on, on the Senate district that I represent, the people that I represent, uh, working hard you know, day and night to um, find solutions to the problems that not only the Central Valley faces, but that the, the really California is facing. And, and uh, I think, you know, being focused, I, I'm trying to do more in, in conveying the message of, you know, what it is, what the Central Valley is like because I just think there's 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 a lot of uh, misunderstanding or perceptions about what the valley the Central Valley is and uh, you know the Central Valley is connected to every part of this state in, in many ways we just need to bring that more to light and and realize how interconnected we are as as a state. And kind of now that you're back in the district right now at this legislative recess, what are some of your constituents saying? What, what are the, some of the big problems they're seeing right now uh, in your district? Well, you know, they, they're very uh, you know, thankful for the work that I'm doing in Sacramento and um, that, but particularly the biggest concern is the drought water. Water is an issue here for us. And, you know, we've been dealing with it, for a very long time, but this year has been um, pretty bad. We have land that is being fallowed. We have communities that have been going without water that have had bottled water come in. I mean, that's that's part of the whole reason why I decided to run for state senate because uh, I, you know, I've witnessed firsthand communities um, going without water. I've witnessed firsthand how um, the, the impacts of contaminated water in our, in our system. It, this is something that we grew up knowing about and, and talking about, but really didn't become an issue. It didn't We didn't really look at it until 
2019, at least from my knowledge, I know that there was a lot of work already being done in terms of, you know, putting together SB 200, but um, it's something that we finally were able to take action on in 2019. So it's, it's, you know, the drought, when we talk about water, there's, there's so many impacts that it's not just the Central Valley. And I tell this to my team all the time and to others, this is a food security issue. This is a water security issue. Uh, and, you know, this is a, an issue of, of public health and our own health because what we're also seeing is a lot more, you know, pathogens in, in, in water that are creating, you know, potentially deadly, to, you know, illnesses in, in, right. in individuals. So water and the health of our water is so important to mankind. No, definitely. Uh, you know, right, right now we're in the last few days of, of bill signing kind of here in 2020, you know, all members were limited to 12 bills kind of, how did you do this year in 2020? And, you know, do you have anything, you know, signed by the governor or sitting on his desk right now? Yeah. I mean, we have, um, I, I, kind of lost track here, but we we have a, we had a couple of bills signed already. I think there was one that was signed to today, SB 609, uh, which really looks to um, looks to the CalFresh program and allows a it, it's, it's just a, it's such a great program. But it, the CalFresh program, um, if if you qualify, you could uh, enter the program. So it, it's it's a workforce program as well. And it has wrapped pretty much like wraparound services. And uh, and I believe even as of a year ago, um, if, you're bus- if you're an employer, you could also get credit uh, tax, uh, tax incentives to uh, hire someone from within the program. So it's a great benefit all the, all the way around that was signed today. And uh, yesterday we had Senate Bill 393 signed here in Fresno with the governor, which looks to uh, make sure that there, that um, you know, migrant families don't lose access to to child care, uh, and, uh, and and so that was that was a great uh, event yesterday, yeah. and of course, great bill that will help a lot of uh, farm workers and their families and their and their children. So we have a couple a couple of uh, bills signed already. We're looking, I think, still waiting on a few others. Uh, we have the uh, orphaned wells bill that uh, is looking to get additional uh, information of where uh, well you know where these uh, uh, wells are located and and uh, in, in order to make sure that we have uh, that we're plugging them uh, if they're not being uh, used. So. Uh, we're waiting on, on the signature for that one as well. You know, this year was a, a kind of a record surplus budget year. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of money was able to go to a lot of different communities. Kind of, what were some of the things that you advocated for in this year's budget for your district? Water. Uh, the big thing I, I would say the, the big success or big win that we had this year was getting funding for the, you know, uh, for my uh, Essentially, Senate Bill 559, which looks to repair the existing uh, water conveyance uh, 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 systems that just need fixing. Uh, So, you know, when we talk about water conservation, this fixing these canals is water conservation because we're losing water, water that is needed for communities, for um, for people, for our own health, for uh, and, and for, you know, for food. And uh, we we had uh, the governor initially had started off with a two hundred million dollar down payment, and uh, and right now it's at a it was a hundred million dollars. So we're we're thankful for uh, the governor and putting money into into these projects because we need we need to be able to move uh, water around the state of California. We need to do it in a way that um, that is efficient. Right. You know, it's funny, you're talking about how, you know, this water in the Central Valley issue has been going back a long, long time. I remember, you know, back in 2008, uh, 2009, driving through the valley, and they had all these signs. The farmers are always great at, at creating these big signs about what they're thinking. And there was like the Congress created water crisis, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, We still have those. <laughs> exactly. They're maybe a little bit faded, uh, you know, and kind of driving up and down. You know, you can see, you know, the, the politics of the valley is, is you know, on both sides of the aisle here. 
what what are some of the things that you're looking forward to do i guess i guess next session to kind of help i guess bring water further well really it's about building the bridge right uh i i know that there's we have these signs up and down the central valley and and really it's about making sure that sacramento that my colleagues that californians not just uh, not just in the Central Valley, but outside of the Central Valley, know the impacts that that water uh, will have, or the lack of water will have on all Californians. And you know, I really see this as a national security issue. And uh, and so I'll continue to be focused in on you know in and around that. And it's really under the um, umbrella of of the human security theme. And so human security is a, a relatively uh, new concept. But it's one that is focused on, on, on basically figuring out what our issues are and trying to solve them rather than um, that, that are grounded on, our, on, local, on local realities. And so I really want to make sure that the people all across the state of California know how uh, you know, lack of water is, is, a human, is a human issue, but it's also a, it, it's a threat to human security. Uh, to our well-being, to our livelihoods, and and, uh, and one of the one of the things that I always say is that when we talk about climate change, I think that we 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 talk about it um, in in many other in many ways, but the one way that we that we don't talk about it is how does you know, how can we do better to to impact how do we adapt how do we adapt because. Um, obviously, there's things that we can do that we need to do to make sure that we that we stop uh, the situation from getting worse. But what do we do to make sure that along the way we're protecting, you know, humans uh, from from the impacts of, of climate change? And so that's I you know ask for a, a select committee uh, on human security, and I'll be doing a hearing uh, this fall on on. On my first hearing will be on water uh, and, and the impacts that water has on on, our, on human security, and so uh, that's that's a lot of the work of you know what I'm trying to do and making sure that, uh, that that we continue to focus on water, but really bringing about the issues and making sure that we're seeing how they all overlap. That it's not just a water more water for ag down in the Central Valley. No, this is. A food security issue. This is a health issue, and uh, you'll see some of my legislation uh, in next year that will focus in on that. And I guess you know, are there like a few solutions, like big ticket items that you think could help? I guess add water security for you know the state and and the Central Valley. Well, I think that we need to be focused. Well, we need to first fix and update our outdated infrastructure system, our canals. Uh, obviously, the, there's there's subsidence that is happening that is uh, allowing water to, to escape and creating a, more of a water shortage. Um, I think that we really need to also uh, think about water in the next five to 10 years uh, and, and, and the threats to, to water security and, and making sure that, uh, that, that water stays here in the state of California, that we continue to have enough water to not for, you know, for people. Um, and maybe it's a little bit more work on CEQA. Maybe it's a little bit more work on uh, CEQA exemptions, I, I should say, CEQA exemptions and or uh, just figuring out uh, uh, how else we can create more clean water for the state of California. I mean, this system was created at a time for a population of 19 million. We're at population, you know, 40 million. Right. Uh, there's, there's only so much that 40 million people can conserve. That's just the bottom line. So how are we going to get more water coming into uh, the state of California? we got to figure that out. And I don't know if that's a, a you know, storage, you know, underground storage uh, water system. If it's uh, um, whatever, I think it's all hands on deck. I still uh, haven't figured out exactly what what the solution is, but I think that uh, part of having that first hearing on you know, water security uh, is is extremely important and bringing in some some experts that have expertise on that in that area. Okay, yeah, that was going to be my next question. Is is you know, is your select committee going to help you? I guess 
derive a solution or, or at least kind of reach one? I mean, that's, that's the goal. I mean, water is complicated, right? right? I, there's, there's a famous saying that, um, that, uh, you know, I think it goes along the lines of waters, waters for fighting and whiskeys for drinking or something along those exactly. lines. But <laughs> you know, the And that's, it's, it is complicated, but we really need to start coming together to figure out the solution because all of our lives are going to be, are already being impacted and are going to continue to be impacted if we don't work together to come up with a solution. And uh, there's, there's, we have a lot of, uh, talent in the state of California, we need to be tapping into every, um, every bit of, of talent that, that we have so that we can come up with a, an adequate solution that is not only going to help and save my, you know, uh, people here in the state of California, but it's going to just save mankind for the entire world, because this is an issue that water shortages and, and, and you know, just less water is something that is occurring all around the world, not just in the state of California. No, definitely. Um, you know, you, you've been appointed to the Latino Leadership Committee. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about that appointment and kind of your role in the committee? Yeah. So back in July of 2020, I got an unexpected call uh, from the Biden uh, team uh, campaign, and I was asked to join the Latino Committee, uh, the, the National Latino Committee. And I said, yeah, sure. I I'll do whatever to help uh, Vice President Joe Biden. And because I've just been a big fan, I've been a big fan from uh, the moment he, from the time he was back as vice president uh, uh, under Obama. I, and so it, I said, yeah, sign me up. What, what, what do I need to do? And so sure enough, uh, I, I didn't know exactly what that meant, but as you know, kind of the days went on, I learned that there were, uh, about 45 uh, individuals across the uh, across the the nation that were part of this Latino committee that included uh, six of us here in the state of California and and uh, I was the only um, legislator uh, representing in the in that national Latino committee wow. along with a couple of governors and and uh, senators uh, and uh, across the nation so. It was uh, it was really just coming together with putting putting together the Latino uh, agenda for uh, for the Biden campaign and really what the what the needs of the Latino community uh, are and how uh, we were looking to find solutions to, to address them and so uh, we put together uh, a kind of like a policy proposal policy proposal that uh, that included topics on everything from education to healthcare to jobs. And, and a lot of that is, is what is kind of being implemented uh, to a certain, to a certain extent to, uh, through the white house at the moment. No, that's cool. Do you guys, have you guys met uh, recently or any plans to meet in the future? Uh, I mean, we stay, there's, there's a, Few that stay in touch, and uh, I know that the most recent call I had was with uh, a state senator, a former, I think, at this time, a former state senator out of Florida. Uh, I believe uh, he's go if he, I believe he's already been appointed to uh, a position, uh, but I'm not exactly sure if he's been confirmed or not, or where right. his appointment process is. Okay, cool. So, and so I, I guess you know now is kind of when when you're coming up with your big ideas obviously you already have some thoughts of what you want to do on water kind of what what's some of the other uh, i guess areas or bills you have planned for for next legis legislative session well it, going kind of touching again once on human security i, I really want to uh it, focus on One Health. It, and, and One Health, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the topic or if you've heard of it, but yeah. One Health is also a concept fairly new that, that focuses on how human health, uh, animal health, and environmental health are all interconnected. And so if we really want to solve or figure out how to get out of this pandemic, we really need to figure out the impacts that you know the environment and and, uh, and, and, and that animals and humans, how they're all intertwined in the role that they play. And so uh, we touched on that uh, a little bit this, 
this year through Senate Bill 453, which was signed, I believe, last week. And that bill, essentially, what it, what it looks to do is to allow um, you know, research uh, on uh, zoonotic research at CSU campuses and uh, allocate some funding for it. And so it's such a big thing. Uh, personally, I think, you know, the, I think it's something like 60% of emerging uh, diseases are, come from, jump from animal to, to human. Right. And so- As uh, we've all learned. Recently. As we've all learned, exactly. Yeah. As we all have learned. And, and if we really want to um, change that, if we really want to address, I mean, look, it's going to be, Come more and more of an issue, and it already has been an issue. We just haven't really seen how it's all kind of interconnected and, and tied together. And so, if we really want to look at the the future uh, or prevent the next pandemic, we really have to start looking and doing more zoonotic research. And so, uh, I think that we need to be doing that at all levels right. of of the education system. And currently, a lot of the research is focused to UCs, and so. Uh, this bill is, is great because it just it looks into the diseases that are found in, in, in animals that could spread to humans, but really diseases on animals and diseases on crops, they, they, they're also a, it, it's also a food security issue because you have a disease that, that's found on a crop, it could essentially take out the entire crop. Uh, and of course, that we don't need that. Right. In this time when our food supply chain is unstable and and so we need to make sure that we we prevent diseases and outbreaks on 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 crops on animals because at the end of the day they all have an impact on humans uh, and once again i think that's that's how it's all ties into human security and and one health is is an area where i plan it to continue to focus on and Quite frankly, there's there hasn't been a lot of focus in on agriculture and and just the role that agriculture plays in 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 our everyday lives. And so uh, I'm really excited at the work that we've that we've done so far, and really excited about the work that we'll continue to do in this area. Yeah, I guess we we don't really ponder it until we're directly confronted with it, and exactly. as we have been in the past year and a half, uh, we've had to deal with a lot of that. So right. Definitely uh, merits. I guess for, for those of us interested in, I guess, following your select committee, can you give us a little more information about when you guys are going to be meeting and, and who's on the committee? Yeah, so on the committee is uh, Senator Ben Allen, Senator Ben Wesso, and Senator uh, Melendez, Melissa Melendez, and, uh, and myself. And we're looking to have our first hearing uh, sometime in November, but we're still going through the approval process to make sure that, that we... Uh, that we get a confirmed date. So uh, just stay tuned uh, to all those listening in okay. because we're looking to ha have one in, in um, November. Uh, so, I, you know, it's, it's a very interesting and fascinating area, but I also encourage if those that are listening in that if they want to hear a little bit more about this, uh, this, this area of, of interest of mine, I encourage them to go to my website. We did a uh, virtual town hall at the beginning of the year and a lot of good information was, was, you know, kind of put out there to talk a little bit more about zoonotic, you know, research and the role that it plays in, in health and the role that it plays on our everyday lives. Oh, definitely. We'll definitely check that out. Well, Senator Hurtado, thank you so much for joining us. And it was, it was very informative and uh, hopefully we can catch up with you uh, sometime next year to kind of see how your select committee is doing and kind of the things you're working on. Anytime. Thanks again. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Take way. care. Bye.